Howdy y'all, it has been a hot minute and do you know why? Do you know why I haven't been posting? Lack of motivation and I'm bad at being consistent? Yes, but also I have a much more legitimate reason. I hit my hand. Hyperfixation. Yeah, it's great. I love it so much. So what is hyperfixation? I'm glad you asked. Hyperfixation for ADHD is very similar to a special interest for autism. Basically, it is like an obsession on steroids. The main difference being special interests tend to last a lot longer, whereas hyperfixations tend to come and go. You might relate to a lot of this if you've ever been super obsessed with a fandom. Know in your heart that hyperfixation makes it a ton worse. But you can absolutely relate and you are free to talk about in the comments about how hashtag relatable it is. I'm hip with the kids. I'm one cool bean, I'm the bee's knees. I missed my knee, I was gonna, was gonna do a knee slap. Ah! So today I'm going to be talking about the five stages of hyperfixation because woof, they're a doozy, woof, I'm a dog. Bark, bark, bark. Without any further ado, do how about let's get right into the thingy, majigger. Once again, I'm the coolest ever. Stage one is when you find the thing. You get interested in it, you click on something, you watch something, you read about something, you hear someone talk about something, and you look into it. You find something out and you're like, hey, this is pretty cool, I kinda like this. Then you're in the rabbit hole and you start going deeper. Stage two, <laughs> I'm not cool. Stage two, again, not cool. Stage two is when you start to get invested. You start talking about it a lot, posting about it a lot, and it becomes this big part of your life and it sort of starts taking over what is important in your brain and you might neglect other things in your life for the sake of this thing. You start talking about it way too much to the point where it probably offends most of your friends and family, but you can't seem to help yourself even though it's super embarrassing and you know how obnoxious you're being. And then if- hello? Hello? Stage three. Stage three is where the magic happens. You are obsessed. There's no turn back now. It's too late to turn back now. And this is also the part that is the hardest. You have become so fully immersed in this subject that it physically, yes, literally physically pains you to try to talk or focus on anything else. You have to be doing something related to the hyperfixation 24 seven or your brain starts to vibrate. <laughs> like I've gotten actual pains in my body, just like super super tightness in my shoulders and started like heart pumping really fast and weird and just tingly and muscle soreness and everything if I'm not focusing on the hyperfixation. At this point you've probably also memorized a little bit more than necessary because you've watched the video so many times that you just accidentally memorized a lot of random things. And it's also the part where you have left all dignity behind, lost to the winds, never to be seen again. Oh. Here we go, my like jam! Ladies, lords, and non-binary royalty, watch me as I beat this geek and do it joyously. I'll vanquish any villain with the gall to try to toy with me. Ask the dragon witch, she knows the drill, you're screwed royally. Stricken with clairvoyancy, events occur. As I foreseen, your verse was weak, your rapping stinks flamboyantly, employing these trisyllabic rhymes. Psh, I can match that easily. I'll beat you every time, so you do not want beef with me, Princey. I drown at lesser MCs when I float, there's no avoiding me. Under pressure, I rise up, holler at your buoyancy. Ooh. Diadems are worn on capita. I had this battle on lock like Attica. You're through, go home, Princey, pack it up. I claim to be the better bard, and I backed it up. <laughs> At this point, you've probably formulated a strong bond with a specific character who becomes your absolute favorite. <laughs> what is that? Ironically enough, <laughs> or not ironically, I guess coincidentally, appropriately, that alarm was set to remind me to drink water because in the new video, my favorite character made a big deal about how important it is to drink a lot of water, so... Cheers, this is to you, Logan Xander. Shot, 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 shot. So basically anyone can say anything related to anything and your brain will be able to find a way to bring it all the way back around to your hyperfixation. Then I came up with a new word today. Okay. Oh, I know big words too. 
saxophone. I'm just, I'm just done with you. I can't do this anymore. I'm gonna make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and then it'll be it. That's Are you gonna use Crofter's jam? You gonna, you gonna? Use Hooray! That's not obnoxious to everyone around you. Seriously though, you should see my Tumblr before and after this interest. It is almost entirely Sandersides right now. That is a, it's a bit of an issue. And that brings us right in to stage four. This is the point that I am currently at. I just used a prepositionatory at to end a sentence. Grammar gods, please spare me. I'm so sorry. Thankfully, this is the stage where you're actually able to be productive. I hit myself in the face. So stage four is probably the best part and the peak. Well, I guess three and four, somewhere between the two is the peak of the hyperfixation where it is at its strongest. So it's the stage in time where you might begin to go into in-depth analysis about the characters. You'll be able to write predictions and analyses and theories and all these ideas and it'll give you so much inspiration and it's amazing. I did make a prediction post before the new video came out with like 20 something bullet points and only one of them turned out to be kind of iffy and the rest of them were eerily accurate and people were like, what the heck? That's what happens when you're hyper fixating and go into full on analysis mode and are able to figure out a bunch of things and you theorize about everything and put all the things together. That was one breath. <laughs> I may or may not have conducted a specific analysis or experiment amongst the fandom to find out what people's favorite characters are and what the characters they feel like they relate to the most are and then the different combinations they're in and like what it means by favorite character versus character they most relate to and all the different combinations and permutations and such and this might be one of seven pages of tally marks that I have taken. This is the last page so far. Shut up, don't judge me. <laughs> this is also the point in time where you might make a side channel that's entirely based on this new interest. It already has the same amount of subscribers as your main channel and by the time this video comes out it will definitely have more because it is growing like crazy because fan accounts grow like crazy. Uh, not that that's me or anything. <laughs> and then magically comes round five. Dear God, let this round happen to me soon. <laughs> this is the, the stage where it's beginning to subside. Maybe you'll still be interested in the thing afterwards. Maybe you'll completely forget about it and be like, wow, that was kind of dumb. Because hyperfixations don't discriminate. They will take and take and take and we keep hyperfixating anyway. I need to stop with the musical references. <laughs> Right, hyperfixations don't discriminate. Basically, it could be anything. Like you can look back on it and be like, that was kind of a weird thing to suddenly be really interested in. But at the time, you are so invested in it that you would swear that it's the best thing that's ever existed. I don't think that's gonna happen with me in this one though, which is what everyone says every single time. But honestly, I think this is a really interesting thing that I'm still gonna be into even after the hyperfixation is over. But I don't want the hyperfixation to end because I love it so much. But after it subsided, maybe you're still interested in it, maybe you're not. But you are finally free to be taken over by a completely new hyperfixation, but we shall see. <sighs> but at the moment, the only thing that I can seem to talk about at all is this. Everyone says that Logan's like a completely emotional robot, but the only thing ever. Yeah, obviously because he's like an ESTJ, he's gonna end up with an eye grip, and Patton is gonna be able to help him with that. Ever. Part two of moving on, he makes Patton like a cat hoodie. Ever. <laughs> anyway, if you have hyperfixations, that sucks and I don't have advice for you, sorry. If you've ever been in a fandom obsessively, then you'll probably relate to a lot of these. Just know that it's basically that on steroids. <laughs> so be lucky that you just have regular amounts of obsession, which I know all the people who are obsessed are like, I can't believe how obsessed I am. Like I'm way too into this. Trust me, it gets worse. <laughs> but that doesn't mean y'all aren't allowed to say that or complain or anything like that. In fact, I would love to hear what you guys are interested in, honestly. Anywho, I hope you enjoyed this. If you feel my pain or have sympathy upon me, give me a like because that will save my soul somehow. I don't know. Subscribe if you wish to join the madness. And as always, have a beautiful day full of magic and joy. I'm gonna fall over. Oh, or should I do Thomas's outro? And until next time, take it easy, guys, gals, and non-binary pals. Peace out. <laughs> His outro's fun. Uh, boop again. Boop. Part two. I'm flying high, but I got a feeling I'm falling, falling for nobody else but you. You caught my eye, and I've got a feeling I'm falling. Show me the ring, and I'll jump right through.